it is impossible to deny that the demand for crossovers in the Philippines are at an all-time high. These small SUVs, as you might call them, really put together practicality, space, comfort, fuel efficiency, wrapped up in a very stylish package that make it very hard to deny. And we have such an example here today in the form of the 2023 Hyundai Creta GLS. Let's find out if this uh, stylish little crossover can make waves in a very hot and contested segment. It's so hard to get a regular loan. There are just so many things you need to submit. You've got, you're drowning in papers, you've got requirements, photocopying IDs, tax IDs, pay slips. there's just so much. And then if you miss that one phone call that you need to take, ah, ah, there is a better way. If you own your own car, you can refinance it and keep it with Sangla ORCR from AsiaLink. You know, I own my own car, I could get a loan and get shoes. Lots and lots of pretty shoes. Wouldn't be the best reason to get a loan, but yeah, that'd be nice. Look, it's pretty simple. Only five documents are needed. It has low interest rates and the release of funds is just from one to three working days. It's that fast. Let me tell you how it works. Number one, you can get a loan of up to 70 to 75% of the fair market value of your car. It just needs to be 2005 or newer to qualify. Now, for example, if your fair market value is 1 million Philippine pesos, you can get a loan of up to 750,000 Philippine pesos. That's a good chunk of change. Your loan duration can be 12 to 36 months with an interest rate of only 1.25 to 1.5%. That's better than any personal bank loans. These are the simple requirements that you're going to need, okay? So number one is your ORCR, of course. Number two, two government IDs like your driver's license or passport and the likes. Number three, proof of billing like a phone or electricity or even an internet bill. Number four, your TIN or tax identification number, of course. And number five, your proof of income. Now, once you have your loan, you can make monthly payments via a number of payment channels, such as Gcash, Maya, bank transfer, just to name a few. Whoa, that ORCR financing is fast. Thank you, AsiaLink. Kasama mo ang AsiaLink. We've taken a look at the credit before on our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to see the walk around, I'm sure that the link is somewhere above or in the description down below. But as a refresher, let's go quickly through the automobile. Up front, the meat of it will be the paramedic jewel design found on the grille, which is really a signature of Hyundai's. Up on top, you'll find your very unique DRLs, which obviously match the parametric jewel design. Down below that, you'll have the headlamps and then your turn signals found down below. The rest of the front clip blends in really well with the design of the grille and the lights and really makes for a very handsome look. Down the side, you find plenty of cuts to really make things interesting. The arches above the fenders and the cuts in the doors really give depth to the side profile of this crossover. And I really like how this silver looks with the blacked out roof as well. The Creta stands at 200 millimeters of ground currents, equipped with 17 inch alloy wheels wrapped in 60 series tires with disc brakes on the front and rear. Now, if the bejeweled front and chiseled sides aren't enough for you, the rear definitely gets interesting. Take a look at the rear lamps. This is as what Hyundai calls it as a boomerang lamp because it might be a bit of a stretch, but if you look at it closely enough, there is continuation that comes all the way from the top to the downside and then it does, it does mimic somewhat of a boomerang. Then you've got your third brake light found up on top and then your camera found here in the center. When you open her up, you are looking at 416 liters of space with a flat loading lip. And I think that's important because it's easy to load and push items inside. The seat splits 60-40 and opens up to a total of 1,384 liters, easily fitting so many bike buying boxes. In the rear, the first thing you will notice is the color scheme. Now, this is not exactly brown or just chocolate. It's referred to as cognac, 
which yeah, okay, works for some people. I myself not so much because I'm more of a tequila guy. I don't uh -huh. know. I don't know if you can make clear seats. That wouldn't be possible. Uh, but uh, although the color scheme will work for some, I'm not sure if the leather will be happy, happily accepted by everyone because it's not the most supple, but at least you know that you can clean it very, very well. And getting in and out of the automobile is very, very easy because the bolsters aren't too uh, predominant, but they're enough that when you're sitting, it will keep you in your seat if Jack decides to drive like a madman. Now, the people have made mention that uh, we understand, or rather, you guys understand that when I say that this is Jack's normal driving position to see just exactly how much leg room, which is, is pretty decent, and headroom there still is. Now, some of you guys have commented that you guys who actually want to see Jack be sitting behind his own driving position. And I promise you we'll get to that very, very soon, if not in the next video. We can't do it just right now because Jack isn't wearing anything but a banana hammock and I don't want to ruin any lives. So, let's continue. Uh, with the toys back here, you've got air vents found in the center, which I like the design of, by the way. Very, very nice. And uh, there's two, so the rear passengers don't have to fight over it. A small little cubby hole found right here, and one charging point. Granted, it's not a Type C, but at least there is one, right? You also have a center armrest with two cup holders, large enough to hold my bottle. If you were to put Jack's ginormous bottle, that's just not going to work. On the door, however, I would have thought that at least my bottle would fit, but because of the speaker indentation here that comes out, yeah, it's not going to happen. So you're better off putting it here or just keeping it beside you. Now the door has got lots of textures on it, which I appreciate. This is one type, this is another type, and this is another type as well for the speaker. Uh, it's, however, I will say that it is plastic. It doesn't, however, look like it's affordable plastic. It looks like it's more upmarket plastic, if you know what I mean, because the textures really add to it, and I like it. And besides, if you think about it, uh, if you do have children, this is the type of interior that you want. Very easy to clean, and it doesn't matter if your kids scratch it with their toys, <laughs> bottles, and whatnot. So yeah, that part I like, because I'm thinking about my family in that sense. Um, let's move up front, and I'll show you some other things. Are we done back here? But yeah, I said the headroom already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go up front. Now up front, obviously, you'll have the same leather and whatnot as you find all over the cabin, right? So you're thinking that it might actually be, again, looks more on the affordable side. But truthfully, everything that you have up here actually makes the car worth its price. Allow me to explain. Let's start with the fact that your instrument cluster is a 10.2 inch screen, much larger than you will find on the Stargazer. Although the steering wheel and the functions on the steering wheel are similar to that of the Stargazer. Then you move on to the center console. You have an eight inch touchscreen infotainment system that has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Plus it's also got wireless charging found down here in this pad, huh? That's pretty awesome. And then you've got so many driver aids inside this car, like cruise control and lane keep assist, but we'll get to that a little bit later when we're driving. Not everything is all sunshine though, because this entire section right here is all piano black. It looks good, but again, the problem with piano black is that it is a fingerprint magnet. And this amount of piano black here, even Beethoven would be ridiculously happy. Here in the center, this is a cool, cool thing that they have. These cup holders actually have lights underneath. So obviously it's not gonna work if you, let's say for example, put my bottle in there. But if you take Jack's, I want to pump myself up bottle, put it in there. Other side, other side. Oh, the other side, there you go. There. Oh, that's a bigger one. Okay, um, the light comes through and it sort of like gives it a glow. So if you have milk in here and you have it glow, then you'll have something out of like the, the Star milk. Wars cantina. I don't know why you'd put milk in this thing, but anyway, there you go. Jack's ridiculously ginormous bottle will not fit, unfortunately, even on the door. But people with normal sized bottle who are not compensating for anything. Yun, kasha. There are also other cool features inside this car, which include this button right here. 
drive and traction control. It gives you drive modes inside this automobile, which I would love to show you as we go on a drive right now for two reasons. Number one, I really do want to get going. And number two, it would be nice to turn on the air conditioning because I am sweating like a, I know, you know what? I'm not going to say the, the term again, but Please do like and subscribe our channel. Uh, give this video a like if you deem it fit uh, because we create these videos just for you guys. Now, I have made no secret that CVTs are not exactly my favorite thing out there. I still do really prefer uh, a conventional automatic because with CVTs, sometimes you can get this sluggish rubber band feel from the transmission. However, because I am such a cheap person, like I'm really legendary, the cheapness that I have, I appreciate CVTs because of the benefits for fuel consumption. Now, with that said, the CVT inside this car is actually one of the highlights because I'd say that it's executed actually very, very well, if not one of the best ones out there. It doesn't have this rubber bandy kind of a feel in it, and it really comes close to acting like your conventional automatic transmission. So in that aspect, I really do feel that it's one of the highlights of this automobile. Now, in terms of power, up front, you've got a 1.5 liter, four cylinder, naturally aspirated gasoline engine that produces 113 horses and 144 newton meters of torque, and obviously made it to a CVT. Now, in terms of the grunt that you get from it, well, it's not by all means legendary because you've got the likes of the Cool Ray out there, which delivers a lot more. But it is the same power option that you will find inside the Stargazer. And it is by no means sluggish at all. It's actually pretty smooth. Now, as for fuel efficiency, well, on the highway, you can get about 18.5 kilometers per liter. But when you're stuck inside the city, as we are right now, dealing with EDSA traffic, and I'm going all of 10 kilometers per hour, you still will be able to achieve 10 kilometers per liter. Comfort is good. Vibrations and harshness is kept down to a minimum. I really never found myself bothered by any of these things inside the automobile. Wind noise, sure, yeah, that will creep in past 90, 95 kilometers per hour, and you'll notice that. But other than that, I never found myself wanting more than the comfort that the car already delivers. In fact, uh, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but there are times when you first get inside an automobile and you're, well, overwhelmed with how quiet it can be, and you're really, really enjoying it. But it's not until you take it on the highway that you realize, well, wh where is that noise coming from? That little thing that, where is the noise coming from? I never got it inside this automobile. And then there's the fact of the steering, which is actually very light, very easy to operate the automobile. It tightens up when you need it, uh, when you're going at speed, but inside the city, very easy to operate, even in, around the tighter streets of the metro. We were lucky enough to take uh, the Creta around some twisty roads when Hyundai Philippines brought us to Cebu, which was definitely a lot of fun, and I'm sure the link is somewhere down below. But I will say that, yeah, I will agree that there is some form of body roll still. You'd expect that from a car that has 200 millimeters of ground clearance. Yet, it wasn't the man a fish out of water when we were doing these things. It was still rather stable. Just don't expect it to be a, a Veloster going around the Nürburgring. <laughs> there is a premium to be paid when you're talking about a crossover with this much tech around it and this much comfort. However, you'd be surprised at just exactly where the model line starts. Now, I did say that this automobile has a good amount of tech in it. Yes, that's true. That's, that rings true. But, well, there are other examples out there in this same category at this price point that offer a little bit more, specifically from the Chinese. In essence, they will have, uh, let's say, for example, cruise control, but theirs will have adaptive cruise. Um, you have a reverse camera inside this automobile, but others can offer a 360-degree view. And then also others will even offer parking assist. And then, ha, huh, and not to nitpick, they also offer power seats. So I'm not saying that it's a deal breaker. It's just that it's nice to pay a certain premium and be given all those options as well. 
know what I mean? It's nice to be spoiled. The Hyundai Creta starts at just a hair over 1 million Philippine pesos. It's true, but the GLS, well, that tops out at 1,388,000 Philippine pesos. The Creta is a prime example of an automobile that just basically gets the job done. It's got comfort, check. Uh, practicality, check. Good looks, most definitely, check. Now, while I will admit that it lacks certain cutting-edge technologies that will, you will find in other automobiles at this particular price point, but as a whole, well, it's a pretty versatile, good-looking automobile that I think should be part of your shortlist for your next crossover. And when you're ready, head on over to autodeal.com.ph and try the Get Code button because that is absolutely free. Thank you.